Why do we suffer from insecurity and doubt as artists? That's the question I would like an answer to. Let's get started. Joe McKenzie here, your watercolor coach. If you're watching this, you're already a very brave person. How do I know that? Because you're probably a painter or a visual artist or a creator in some way. And what I know about this is that it takes a lot of courage to do these things, an incredible amount of courage to do these things, because there's a lot of judgment from the outside world, and even more importantly, a lot of self-judgment. And you just have to deal with it if you want to continue to produce and share work. So I've had some experiences. I've been painting these uh, faces behind me. I've been painting uh, friends and family. The reason for doing that is because I wanted to make sure that I got the likenesses and if I know the people well then I know that I've gotten the likenesses so it's been kind of fun populating my studio with with faces that I know and that I love uh, but yesterday I sat down painted two paintings and they both circled the drain so fast I, I, I couldn't believe it and I thought I'm, I'm the worst painter in the world <laughs> you know like do not stop it, go, do not collect $200, just all the way, you know, take the express train to the worst painter in the world. And I said to myself, you cannot do this. You cannot do this. It is just not allowed. You know, there are some days when things just don't go either because you're not plugged in, because you're um, tired, because something else is distracting you that you're not aware of, but just, you're not allowed to go to, I'm the worst painter in the world. You're just not allowed to. And especially because being able to paint at all, at least as far as I'm concerned, is, is such a privilege. You know, I worked a, a nine to five job for a really, really long time, which then allows me to do this now. And all that time I thought about how much I wanted to paint, how much I wanted to do this thing. And now I'm able to do it. And when I first retired, I thought, oh, I'll never complain. I will never complain again because I get to do my heart's desire. And here I am saying and complaining. So I thought, okay, not allowed. Now I'm gonna tell you another story, which uh, was interesting to me because it was it's always so surprising to me because I always think that that um, I'm the only one you know the world's all about me well eh, to an extent but <laughs> but in this particular case uh, I'm in a I'm in a particular group and it's a very lovely self-deprecating group and we get together on a regular basis and share work or different things like, you know, framing techniques or materials or a show or, or those kinds of things. You know, it's a community. It's a small community and we're able to support each other. And it, I, I, I enjoy that. Well, at the last group, everyone is self-deprecating. You know, everyone's a little shy, even though we've known each other or shared work for a period of time. Everyone is a little shy or, you know, we'll kind of put a qualifier before showing the work like, well, this didn't turn out quite the way I wanted to, or this isn't, there's just always a qualifier and myself included. I think, why do I do that? I don't like it when other people do it. Why do I do it too? But anyway, seem to do it. And I would also say I've thought of it as being a very woman thing to do, you know, very gender specific. So in this particular group, um, there is a, uh, uh, a male, and he is the painter who's probably the most um, decorated. You know, he, so when he paints, he usually, he'll win at least a prize, if not the top prize, um, because it's a kind of painting that, that is really rewarded in, in watercolor societies. And he's a really good painter. I'm not saying he's not a good painter. He's an excellent, excellent painter and a lovely man. And so he shared, you know, this painting that he did this month. and. You know, said, well, how, how'd you feel about it? You know, people said, we're very complimentary of the painting. And, and, but he sounded a little off, like, you know, was putting qualifiers in there. I thought, gosh, why is he doing that? And so I asked him and I said, um, did you say you weren't happy with this painting after you did it? And he said, no, I thought it was a terrible painting. He said, but the next day I posted it and it, and it sold right away. So then I felt better about it. And I said, you, you didn't think it was a good painting? And he said, no, as a matter of fact, I don't like anything I paint when I first paint it. And I was flabbergasted <laughs> because I thought, wow, it, it is just endemic in the, um, in the world of visual arts that um, there is always a painting in your head. There's always this idea of what you're going to create. And no matter what you do, it 
usually ends up being different than what this thing that you had in your head. And it's always this disconnect, which is really hard when you're done with something to just accept what you've produced as opposed to this you know, painting that you've made in your head. And the way I compare it to is, is gardening because I always have this magical garden in my head. I have a garden, I have a beautiful garden. And for years, I've tried to get different things to grow in the garden, like delphiniums, for example, or specific types of oriental lilies. And I will be successful for a really short time, and eventually, you know, they either get shoved out or they, they crash and burn and don't do very well. And so in more recent years, I've accepted my garden because I realize when I try to impose certain species on it or things that I want, it, it just it says no, you know, we're, we're a community here. Let's go to the gardener's community and, and we don't want your, you know, this thing that you decided you wanted to put in here. So now I, I have a very, very full garden, lots, you know, lots of peonies, as you can imagine, very, very full. And, and, but I would say not, not a huge variety of things, lots of repetition of, of different plants, but not necessarily a huge variety because over years what I found was that my garden just decided what it was going to be. It just decided that certain things would thrive and certain things weren't. I do not understand why, but that's the way it is. And I accept it. And now, so when I sit and I look at my garden, I will also think about painting and think, this is the way you need to be about the paintings. You have to accept that these paintings are what you made them. <laughs> not the imagined garden or painting in your head, but this thing that you produced instead. Now, what happened yesterday was different. I mean, what happened yesterday was I definitely lost sight of strategy and I could tell I wasn't painting with sensitivity. But on the other hand, I sat down specifically deciding I wasn't gonna paint with uh, sensitivity. I wanted to be really abrupt and I wanted to be really direct and I wanted to see what would happen. And so I realized at the end of the day that I had accomplished my task. I wanted to do it something different. I wanted to experiment and I had done that and I wasn't happy with the results, but I should and am happy with the fact that I was willing to experiment and see what might happen. And I thought, wow, you know, maybe the shift for me needs to be not in um, making a judgment about the final product, but maybe a judgment, if I'm gonna make a judgment, which I seem to be determined to do, about the process and just say, you know, did you participate? Did you set out to try something different? And did you? Then, you know, good enough, move on. So I'm gonna sit down and paint today and try to not be judgmental. But I really, really wonder, I always wonder this, what it is about the visual arts, maybe it happens in writing and poetry and all those things as well, I suspect it probably does, that creates such significant insecurity. You know, we know it happens with actors, which is, you know, why the gossip magazines are so interesting. You know, you, you, you know, people who, who you think have it all and, and, and whatnot are somehow, you know, never fulfilled enough or never feel like they're good enough, you know, and have to use substances to cover for that. We're all just so incredibly fragile. So going back to the beginning, I say, brave on you, you know, brave on you. This is not easy. And it's not supposed to be easy. And the real joy is in the discipline of doing it and in seeing the progress over time, or maybe, maybe it's not even progress over time. Maybe it just is in the doing of it. And maybe that's, maybe that's just plenty. So those are my thoughts for today. If you have felt insecure about your art or put those qualifiers in, please let me know your thoughts below because I'd really like to know what it is, why we insist on doing that. Um, we, mm, mm, it, it's a mystery to me and yet I engage in it. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Oh, enjoy my YouTube channel. <laughs> still, still fighting for my YouTube channel. All right. Bye bye.